this is the book, and it was originally out as an ISSN number book, and finally, Literature for the Snotty and Elite is also now today out as an ISBN number book. One summer day in August, I was 16 at the time. Sandy and I were in the house. I, it was an average Thursday. Mom was out golfing. Dad was at Bob's farm yard doing something man-like, cutting wood or something. The, the cleaning lady had left the house, and I was getting ready for a summer job interview that morning. The phone rings. I answer it. Suddenly, there's a strange voice on the other line talking, asking, is your mother there? And my first instinct was that it was Greg in the other line, a friend of Dad's. He always liked to put on a fake voice and try to fool us kids. So I put on my most cordial voice and I said, no, she's not. May I take a message? And then the voice started going on about how he cut his finger and he was going to the hospital. And then he finally that occurred to me that this was actually my father talking and that he was in so much pain that he could barely speak. So he hangs up the phone and Sandy and I try to call the golf course hoping to catch mom and she's already left and while we waited for her to come home, dad comes home to get us and bring us to the hospital with him. His hand is wrapped up in a shirt half soaked in blood. Sandy gets in the wagon but she told me to wait there for mom. So dad whipped the car out of the driveway and drove down the road and I sit in the driveway watching him drive away. I was so distraught I started to cry but I had to keep myself together because I didn't want it to sound serious when I told my mom that well that you know it was something that wasn't actually that would be something that would make her nervous. I didn't want her to cry. I mean, he cut his finger. He, he'd need stitches, but he wasn't going to die or anything. So I just waited at the front window, and, and when I saw a car drive down the road, I went to the garage. And when she pulled up, I hopped on the passenger side of the car before she could turn off the engine. Come on, let's go, I said with a smile on my face. I tried to preface this story with, let me just say that everything is fine, but you know when bad news is coming up. But I tried to make it sound funny, like Dad was a klutz and his hand was cut. I mean, I did the best job that I could. For 11 blocks, I was the one who had to make sure that everything was okay. I hope I did a good job. for my job, my first job, blah, 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 at the Plush Horse Ice Cream Parlor. <laughs>